Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, it's Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. I would like to uh, call our meeting to order and I'll go ahead and request a roll call. Council Member Harding, Ward 1, present. Council Member um, Hobbs, Ward 2, present. Council Member Brooks, Ward 3, present. Council Member Melinda Mendoza, Ward 4, present. And now I'd like to invite everyone to stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance. So for this evening's agenda, uh, the consent agenda includes the approval of the minutes from September 5th, the work session. We have the department operations reports, which includes the town administrator, public works, treasurer report, public safety, code compliance, and then committee, board, commission, and task, uh, task force reports, which there are none for tonight. Um, we then have the mayor's report, council member reports and concerns. We'll open it up for resident comments. Under our action section, we have no new business and no unfinished business, and then we'll adjourn. Um, we have a presentation this evening, so we have a representative from Congressman Ivey's office. Uh, before I bring him up, I would like to uh, request a motion to approve the agenda for this evening. Council Member Harding, I'll make the motion to state it. Council Member Melinda Mendoza, I will second that. Any discussion? So it says no presentations, none. Do we need to amend that to include Congressman? Oh, President? sure. Yeah, we, we just need to amend it to um, add um, Ethan Sweet from Congressman Ivey's office. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Any further discussion? So Council Member Hobbs make a motion to um, amend the agenda and to add Ethan Sweet um, to the agenda. Council Member Brooks seconds that motion. Thank you. Okay, so all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Awesome, thank you so much. So Mr. Sweet, thank you so much for being here. Um, please introduce yourself and thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Ethan Sweet. Um, I am a community liaison for the Office of Congressman Glenn Ivey. And I, first off, wanna say hello. I know it may have been a while. Um, but I want to let you know that we are here uh, to help you serve our constituents better. So if you have any constituents who are having issues uh, with federal agencies or you yourself are having issues, feel free to reach out. Um, I think most of you have my email address. Um, we'd be more than happy to see if we can't get you an answer. Uh, but tonight, specifically, I wanted to come here and talk about uh, community project funding for fiscal year 2025. Um, so community project funding, also uh, known as congressional earmarks, is a grant process through the House appropriations process. Um, every year at the beginning of the year when the president announces his proposed budget, the various subcommittees of the appropriations committee uh, go through. They decide what accounts are going to be open for what types of projects and how much funding is going to be um, available. This year, members of the House of Representatives were able to submit up to 15 projects to the committee for consideration. Um, the Senate also has a very similar process. Theirs is called congressionally directed spending, um, and they are allowed to submit an unlimited number of projects. Um, so I would suggest reaching out to them um, as well. But we, and I, I so I do want to stress that um, we don't know a lot about what the fiscal year 2025 process will look like. We have to wait uh, for the guidance to come out from the committee. Um, and to be quite frank, there, this program is up to the discretion of the committee, so there is a possibility that it might not even happen at all. But we want to make sure that you are all prepared, uh, because we are prepared to 
go after this process. So we'll be having a webinar um, on December 3rd, or December 4th, excuse me, from 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, you should have received a flyer uh, a couple last week, I think, by email. Um, so that's going to have information on what this process looks like, some lessons learned from this year, um, and we're going to be able to answer some of your questions about it. So I would invite all of you to join. Um, in the meantime, if you're interested in learning more about this process, um, I would suggest visiting the Appropriations Committee website at appropriations.house.gov. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, they have a, um, it's a, I think it says Member Requests tab, and underneath it, they have last year's guidance as well as the last several years. Uh, so you can get an idea of what accounts have been open in the past and what types of projects they have funded. Um, you can also go to our website, iv.house.gov, and under services, I think it's about the third tab down, uh, there's a button that says Community Project Funding Fiscal Year 2024. And there you can see the 15 projects that our office submitted uh, for this year's appropriations bill um, and um, the accounts that they use and the amounts that are included in the current appropriations bill. Um, so with that, I will ask if you all have any questions. Sure, you're going to ask that or answer this on the webinar, but I'm going to ask anyway. I saw that, or have been told at least from the Senate side, that they have um, a baseline kind of of the amount that you can ask for. Um, I think it was like a million dollars or more. Uh, do you? I know you said the guidelines aren't quite set, but in the previous years, have you had the, that kind of guidance? Um, yeah. So some of the so the guidance is going to change from subcommittee to subcommittee. Some of them do. I, I'm trying to think if any of them have had like a minimum amount, um, but since this is congressionally, you know, congressionally appropriated funding, um, we, you know, do ask that, you know, you think big in terms of the, uh, what you're going after. I think this year we submitted projects that ranged from, I think a couple hundred thousand to we submitted one that was $10 million. Um, they, not all of them received the full funding, I should say that, uh, but just to give you an idea of the scale of the project. Can you give us some examples of, of projects? Are these only capital improvement projects? No. So the there are some that are capital improvement projects. There are some that are also um, program related. Um, so we submitted a congressional earmark. You'll see this on our website um, for the town of Forest Heights to help repair a road that was in deep, deep disrepair in their town. Um, in terms of other construction costs, um, we got the City of Laurel in earmark to help, uh, or not the City of Laurel, uh, Laurel Boys and Girls Club to renovate um, the windows on the Boys and Girls Club building because it was a bit run down and there was an account open for that. Uh, but we've also funded a uh, project. So there's one for the, uh, I believe it's for the uh, state's attorney, Aisha Braveboy, to do a youth justice uh, clinic or something like that. I can't remember the specifics. Um, and then there was one as well uh, for the University of Maryland to study violence in the capital region. Um, so it's gonna depend kind of on what you're looking for um, and what accounts are open, uh, but you can find all that information on our website. So, so if we go to the um, appropriations.house.gov, there should yes. be um, previous, I guess, submission winners that we can look at so that we can have a template in order to improve our chances? Um, so I don't think the Appropriations Committee will be the best place to go to see winners. Um, for that, I would recommend visiting other members of the um, House of Representatives or the Senate. Um, each, each of us are required to post the ones that we submit by law. Um, so we only have ones for fiscal year 2024, but if you look at uh, Representative Hoyer, uh, Representative Raskin, they should have the ones that they submitted for fiscal year 2023, some for 2022, I think as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, a, uh, what is it, a hardball question? <laughs> I'll see if I can answer. Um, any, any type of insight on the government shutdown? Um, I believe I just got a breaking news alert on the way here that some, like, can I read it? Let me see. I don't want to give any like wrong information. So what is this? The House passed legislation to avert flooding. 
Um, yeah, so the House passes Johnson's plan to avert showdown, a uh, shutdown in bipartisan vote. So it seems as though the federal government will be open. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah it's breaking news. You only hear it here in Comar Manor. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And yeah, we're definitely thinking through the projects that we want to fund. So even now we were just discussing, we definitely know that we need some help with our building. So the building needs some renovation. Our kitchen needs to be renovated. We need a public works garage. Uh, we need a, pub, um, a dumpster enclosure because people illegally dump and it also, the trash um, spreads out to the rest of the field. So we're looking at that. But then recreation, that's a big one for us. Um, we wanna open the, the gym more than we currently do um, to provide space for everyone to come and you know, be off the streets and be in a safe location and build community. So these are all the things that we're thinking through. So thank you for coming tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And as we get closer and into early next year, maybe after the guidance comes out and we know what's going on, we can schedule a meeting to kind of talk about some of the projects you have and if there's an account open for there and what we can do. All right, thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, actually, so thank you so much. Um, I think that's a good idea. So we have someone sitting up here with us this evening. So if you have not met him yet, um, I will go ahead and let him introduce himself. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Al Neiman. I'm the new supervisor of Public Works. Um, for anybody who I haven't met, uh, I'm a resident here. I actually live right down the street, a few houses away from our honorable mayor. Um, I don't know, I've, I've been doing this for, for two months now, so I kind of feel like it's not new anymore. I, um, but I really, really enjoy the opportunity you guys have given me. Um, it's kind of a dream job for me to work in the town where I live and see my, you know, quote unquote, nine to five job actually make a difference in my own hometown. And so I love the opportunity and I, you know, this isn't a stepping stone for me. Like this is, I'm 50 years old. I'm, I, I could do this as long as Mike did, as long as I'm, you know, up and breathing. So uh, the fellow before me did it for 40 years, I guess. So yeah, something like that. Yeah, so I'll be 90, it's fine. Uh, so anyway, I, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity and I, uh, uh, I'm just really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Al. It's really great to have you. Um, and uh, just want to say thank you for all the work that you've been doing and all the passion and you're bringing a lot of creative ideas and we really appreciate that. And, and also just a huge shout out to the rest of the Public Works team. Thank you for all you do. Um, I know that we put a lot of things on you, especially with my crazy ideas. So I just want to say thank you. Okay, so um, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. So um, we need, an, uh, well, if there are any questions on any of the pieces of the consent agenda, let's go ahead and go over that now. After we go through any questions or comments, I'll go ahead and request a motion to approve our minutes, but let's first, um, if there's any questions or feedback, uh, now's the time to go ahead and do that. Is Dan Baden on the call? No, okay. No, he's not. But if there's a question, go ahead and pose it and we can always circle back on that. I just, um, I was seeing that the um, community center operations line item 6015 um, recreation supplies, we were um, budgeted for a thousand, we're at 1,055. Just wanted to know if, um, do we foresee having to change around funds to help support that a little bit more? I will actually chime in on that one. Um, so th the process that uh, Mr. Baden has kind of done in the past, why am I ringing so much? Like, it's like me, sorry. 
trying to get close enough, but it's ringing like really weird. Um, so the process that he's used in the past, I don't know if you remember a couple months ago, right after the fiscal year, he would bring us an adjustment to all of those funds. Um, but that happened way after the fact. So my hope is um, within the work plan that I, I gave you this one, um, doing that fiscal year uh, budget review and financial projections that we can do some of that realignment earlier in the year, uh, just because that I get nervous about that. He's probably a little less nervous because he knows when the taxes are coming in and where we're at a little more, more than we all do. Um, but it makes me a little nervous. You know, um, that line is clearly under what it's going to need to be for the year. That line's probably going to be more like $2,000. Uh, so we might as well do that now. Um, other than waiting until the end of the year and it's already passed. So um, that was my hope is to work with him on that so that when we do those uh, projections and um, mid-year reviews, we can adjust those as we go along. Okay, thank you. And then the only thing I'm going to add in the set of minutes that I provided, Mr. Brooks, I apologize. I put an M in your last name between the K and S on the motion at the bottom. So clerical error that when you pass it, just mention the clerical error. Is fine. Um, last question is for public safety on the um, traffic stop of 10 incidents and in disorderly of 18 and then 911 disconnects at 12. So what are we doing to continue to lower those? Because I know that the traffic stop went from 14 to 10 and then disorderly went from 12 to 18 this recent month. The, the traffic stop, um, I think we'd probably like to see those go higher. Those are our officers initiating a traffic stop. So those, when they go up, they're making more traffic stops. Um, from the disorderlies, that's uh, oftentimes, uh, usually it's a uh, storefront or store operators calling because someone's inside causing a disturbance or someone hanging outside asking for money and those kinds of things. They just um, do our best to you know, send the folks along and not have those calls, but uh, they, they just come in as they, uh, those numbers are based on the calls for service. Is there a third? Uh, can I address two? Is there a third one? The third one was just 911 disconnects and base stop our comment. Um, and that is exactly, exactly what that is. And most of those, those increase, um, this really has a lot to do with cell phones. Back in the day when everybody had a landline, you call 911 by accident and they know exactly where it came from and they call you back or they send the police with cell phones, they're mobile. And there's just a lot of people that hit 911 by mistake or some phones you can only dial when, you, when your phone is kind of locked up, you haven't paid your bill, whatever it is, you can only do emergency calls and they, they push that button and it just causes a... Okay, so maybe service. something to bring up during the neighborhood watch. Yeah, and a lot of the 911 calls that are on here are end up with no police response. They'll call the, the dispatcher, will call the number back, and if somebody answers, they'll say, no, it's, you know, my kid's on the phone or something like that. Thank you. Councilmember Hobbs makes the motion to approve the consent agenda and sorry, the meeting minutes, right? Yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. the Yeah, I don't have questions. So makes it um, makes the motion to approve the consent agenda. Councilmember Brooks seconds it. Discussion. Okay, so all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, thank you. So uh, 
Oh, it's on me. Oh. I'm not used to that. <clears throat> okay, so I'll go ahead and go into the uh, mayor's report. Um, I'm also sharing it on the screen. I'm not sure if you can see it up there. Uh, but I'm sharing it via Zoom as well. So I want to um, thank everyone. I wanna, as always, give a huge thank you to our recreation committee, which is headed up by um, Amelia. And for, I think it's, I'm not sure the other lady, Ms. Deborah, I forget what her name is, uh, but she doesn't even live in town and she's in our recreation committee and she's always helping. So again, and all the volunteers, everyone that came out, public works, all the staff, everyone, um, Greg, everyone that um, had a hand in the uh, fall spectacular. That was an awesome, awesome event. Um, it was a great um, time to spend time in Blues Park. And to be honest with you, we transformed that park and I, I view it differently now. I just love being there and feeling like the fall and the crisp air and sitting there in, in the dark watching a movie. I thought it was just awesome. So um, thank you, <coughs> excuse me, to everyone that came out. Then I also wanna say thank you to every home that opened their door to the trick-or-treaters in our town. Thank you so much. It, was, it meant a lot to the kids. And really for me, it's just, um, it increases the walkability of our town. And it's just an awesome way for kids to get to meet their neighbors and to meet other kids. I was walking around town and trick-or-treaters would come and join me. And that, that was honestly just such a blast. And I got my steps in. Um, and it's just, a, it's, it's a beautiful event. People love doing it. People love decorating their houses. Thank you to everyone that decorated their house. Um, that was pretty, pretty awesome. And thank you to, um, the Colmar Manor Bible Church. Oh, Colmar Manor Bible Church. Yeah, thank you for hosting the Trunk of Treat. Uh, that was also really nice. And I loved like all the, the Trunk of Treats and the games that they had. That was really special. So thank you. Um, in November, we hosted a self-defense workshop. So I want to give a huge shout out to Defend Yourself and uh, to Cottage City for partnering with us. One of the reasons why we hosted this self-defense workshop was because uh, there's crime. And so I wanted to provide something that people could do um, and strategies that they can use to feel a little safer. Um, it doesn't eliminate the crime, it could eliminate the risk. Um, so I am really appreciative that for everyone that came out and to defend yourself who came out and for Ms. Blue, who's part of the Neighborhood Watch, um, I think that we should host something like this on a quarterly basis um, and definitely implement some pieces of this into our neighborhood watch to continue talking and having the conversation. Um, I'll, show, I'll share pictures of all of this in the coming slides. And then uh, some of the upcoming events that we have on Saturday, the 18th of November, we're gonna have a cultural community celebration. So we're gonna transform this um, hall into the United Nations. So anyone that wants to represent their country, their region, their city, their town, you're welcome to come. You can get one of these tables. You can bring in your flag. Uh, you can bring in books, pictures, a map. Um, if you wanna bring some food, bring some food and we'll play music from the, from the country that you're from. So it should be a very nice event leading up to Thanksgiving. So it's just a nice way to celebrate the diversity of our town. Uh, where, that's again, one of the things that I love so much about our community is how diverse we are and um, it's truly special. In December, we have the um, neighborhood chat exchange where we'll be continuing with the Spanish classes. Uh, Council member Brooks had started this off with a very small group and we are um, bringing it back and doing it again. And I wanna thank our um, volunteer who sat with me, Sarai. Um, she's really amazing and I loved attending her class and I want to thank Irina for partnering and even before that um, for being a part of it. So I really appreciate you. Uh, great. So some of the meetings that I've had, um, I'll share some photos, but the, the, one of the 
really most productive meetings was the one that we had with our uh, Lieutenant Governor, Aruna Miller. So we hosted a Port Towns meeting with Lieutenant Governor Miller. Um, Mayor James of Bladensburg coordinated this. So she was there. Uh, Mayor Tracy Gant of Edmondson was there. Uh, Commissioner Chair Wheatley was there from Cottage City, and then I was there, and all of our town administrators were there. So we were able to have this private, con private, not so private, conversation with Lieutenant Governor Miller to discuss our um, areas of focus for our specific towns, but then also how we have uh, a vision for our poor towns community. And so I think we're really making um, headway with just talking about the poor towns and how we can improve it and how that'll improve um, all of our communities. Um, do you wanna add anything to that, Greg? Any, anything that stood out or anything? Okay. <laughs> it, was a good, it was a good conversation and it doesn't end there. We're in, we're in continuous conversation with the Governor Miller's office, Lieutenant Governor Miller's office. Also, we had the fall Maryland Municipal League Conference in College Park uh, around the 15th, 14th of October. So that, that's always a great event to um, learn and to network and um, get some new ideas. During this conference, uh, we coordinated a Port Town slash Gateway bus tour. So we invited a bunch of the elected officials from all over Maryland to come and find out what makes our community so special. So we toured um, North Brentwood. We went to Sis's Tavern there. We went to Mixed in Brentwood. We went to Penny Royal in Mount Rainier and um, some artist space, um, open office space in Mount Rainier. We came back to Cottage City, walked along their trail, came to the town of Colmar Manor. Uh, I invited everyone here into our town hall, which they loved. Um, and then we uh, continued on and ended the, the ride in Bladensburg, which is absolutely beautiful. And just doing that with everyone is just super impressive. People need to know the gem that is our community and all of the special historic places that we have. Um, we are a booming community and I think it's only up from here. And I wanna thank everyone that helped coordinate this, thank Cottage City for allowing us to use their bus. We, um, some of us attended Senator Augustine's District 47 leaders meeting. And what I really loved about that is um, Greg and I, our town administrator, have been advocating for more funding for the town administrator circuit rider program. So we want that to be funded um, so that towns similar to our size are able to receive more support and matching support um, to be able to hire and keep town administrators to professionalize our communities and to keep the projects going forward. And to be honest with you, this was our town administrator's idea. And so to see um, Senator Augustine push it forward is just, it's a success to me and I hope that they're able to fund it. You wanna add anything to that? No, okay. Um, we had the PGCMA meeting um, where we talked about some of the legislative priorities for all the local municipal leaders. And then we had a, uh, I attended a Black, Maryland Black Mayor's um, meeting. Some administrative updates that are in the packet. Our website is up and running. I am so excited about it. And I, again, wanna thank our town administrator and Eileen and Melissa, everyone that's been helping update the website. To convert and to develop a new website is not an easy task because you have to create a lot of content. You have to strategize and think through how do you want this laid out and I didn't come into it until the end when I, well, I mean, I, I have been in it throughout the process, but towards the end, um, just to see all the work that's gone into it was very impressive to me. So I just wanna thank you again, Greg, for all of the amazing work that you've done on the website. In the meantime, if there is any feedback, any recommendations, anything that you wanna see on there, please reach out to us. I'm thinking that probably in January when we've, uh, updated it a little bit more. We'll have like an official launch um, and we'll show people how to use it and we'll invite people to, you know, if, they, if you want to submit a blog or if you want to write or uh, submit some of your photos, you're welcome to do that. Some of the initiatives and projects. 
We're continuing to work on the charter review um, committee, so the charter review process. And I believe that the committee had their first meeting this evening. So thank you, Melinda, for being a part of that. And thank you to all the council members for uh, nominating people to be a part of that. Thank you, Greg, again, for leading that. We discussed at our last work session our strategic plan. So you should be on the lookout for an email coming soon with a survey that's, that gives the residents the opportunity to give us feedback on the strategic plan, on the strategic plan. Um, and this plan in and of itself leads the work that we all do collectively. We've been discussing an ARPA realignment. Uh, we're not doing anything about that tonight, but we're again, always looking at the money that we have um, and figuring out if, if things need to be reallocated and we're just constantly evaluating that entire process. Uh, the tree maintenance, uh, you probably saw it for a while in our town that trees were getting trimmed and that was really awesome to see and I have pictures of that um, in the coming slides. And so here we go. So here are some photos. Uh, oh, yes, I also wanted to thank Sal and the, um, the green team for coordinating the town cleanup that we had on the 21st of October. For me, none of the work that we do is possible without our volunteers. So if you ever hear anyone saying anything negative to you, um, please um, know that, that that's one voice, all of us. Uh, for the most part are appreciative of your work and for you stepping up to the plate and actually um, doing a town cleanup. Um, it was your first time and uh, Sal, I'm talking to you. Um, and I just thought that um, it went off great. It was really cool to walk around um, with our neighbors picking up trash and um, just getting into the habit of that I think is really cool collectively as a community. If you wanna do it by yourself, you're welcome to. Um, I find it's a great uh, way to kind of build community amongst ourselves. Um, there's a sign there about the tree work ahead and the truck behind doing some of the, the tree uh, pruning. Another picture there of, of uh, some of the members cleaning up the town. And again, the truck again on the lower right. Um, we had the, so a holistic um, life um, is a nonprofit that is in our town. And we have Malik Alexander, who's our rec coordinator, who also works there. And they do some amazing things. And recently they've rededicated that entire building in the name of David C. Harrington. Mr. Harrington passed away um, about a year or two ago, a year ago. Um, so one of the awesome things about Mr. Harrington, he was the first black mayor of Bladensburg. He had different roles. Um, throughout the county. When I was in, I had mentioned this at the rededication or the dedication, the ribbon cutting of the building, I went to Walgreens and I bought a book on um, African-Americans in Prince George's County. And when I opened the book, one of the first pages I saw was of David Harrington and it talked about his impact in the community. So this is, this is the legacy that he leaves behind. And I'm sure this isn't the last thing that's gonna be named after him. So I'm just, I was happy to be able to be there. Council member uh, Mendoza was there with me too, Delegate Fennell, um, all the different, um, Aisha, uh, yeah, Aisha Brave, State Attorney, Aisha Brave Joy was there. So it was, was a beautiful night or a beautiful day. Um, these are some pictures of the Poor Towns bus tour that we did with uh, different mayors. Delegate Fennell is there. Um, Councilmember Mendoza, thank you for being there. Uh, these are some photos of the um, Maryland Municipal League Conference. And uh, here is Lieutenant Governor Runa Miller and our little meeting with her and her team. You see our town administrator there, deep in, deep in conversation. <laughs> You're wearing the same shirt. Okay. Nice. That's not embarrassing. <laughs> um, these are some photos of the parade that we did in town um, and of uh, Blues Park itself. Oh, I want to give a huge thank you to the DC Lynx um, to the charms that uh, donated all of those pumpkins to us. So I just wanna say thank you so much. We were able to turn our park into a, um, a pumpkin patch. So thank you so much for that. 
thank you to the volunteers. Ms. Jones is here. I called her up and I said, hey, can you do our um, trick or treat board? And she's like, what's that? And I'm like, uh, well, kids are going to stick their hands into a cup. They're not going to know what's in it. They're going to find either a treat or a trick. And she was totally game. And I uh, just want to say thank you for doing that. Some more photos of how this park was transformed. It was so cool. Some of the houses um, really went out. But again, as I mentioned, um, people that came and opened their door and gave out candy, that was pretty awesome. And good candy. We got big candy bars. We didn't get even little ones. When I went home and looked at my daughter's bag, my husband was like, People give out big candy bars in Comar Manor. I'm like, well, I guess so. I'm not used to that. In New York, they don't do that. They give us pennies. So, um, Veterans Day. Um, again, I want to give a thank you to um, all the veterans that live in our town and that have served and all the servicemen that are still serving. Um, here you have Ms. Doretha and Ms. Dronell, both veterans. Um, and it was really nice to be there and share this moment with all the local um, elected officials and veterans. And we ended up going to the American Legion afterwards for lunch, so that was really nice. And uh, a huge shout out to Malik Alexander, our rec coordinator for coordinating this awesome dodgeball um, game against the police. I thought that the police were gonna lose, but they won twice. They, they, are, they are really good at dodgeball. And I think they also won against the, the kids in basketball. So, I mean, that's good. We have um, our, our police department is in shape. So that's good. These are some of the photos of the self-defense class. Um, so we had, we really had a, um, I, I really enjoyed it. We were able to yell and hit things and learn some techniques. So that was really impactful. And that's it for me, I believe. So I'll go ahead and now turn it over to council members. Council Member Harding, Ward 1. Thank you, Mayor, for your great report. Appreciate all the good work that you're doing. You as well, Greg, going up and down in PG County. I mean, Prince George's County. I don't want uh, that we get for now to ever see that video. But yes, uh, council report. So um, I'm gonna keep it really short today. Um, I've been noticing that, at least in my line of work right now, um, once it gets colder, it gets towards the end of the year, there's a lot of sense of loneliness, like there's less reaching out until the holiday type thing. So um, I wanted to start with checking in on our elderly and the vulnerable in our community. Um, in my position right now, uh, I've seen a lot of people uh, just neglect, like go through a lot of uh, either family or through guardian neglect. And, you know, it's really concerning. So as far as the community, if we see someone that's in need, we should lend a hand um, and continue forward. Uh, our site is up, as the uh, mayor just said. Uh, look, I already put it in there the, to echo the town administrator in saying our community is a one-stop shop full of information and opportunities. So please check out our site, see what's available there. We're going to actually do the launch, as she said, what, later on, but there's still available and information on there. So check it. Um, going into the winter time, as I said before, it's getting cold. I've been really cold going to work at night. So I'm sure your cat, I mean, your dog or your pet that's outside is cold as well. So bring your pets in at night. Um, there may be exceptions to animals, but in general, you want to treat your animal nicely. I love animals, so I don't want to hear some dog crying or really loud barking because it's cold and they're telling you to bring it inside. So please <laughs> care about your animals. Um, second to last, we need more volunteers. We got a lot of events happening. We want more community engagement as far as just using our space because the space is for you all. So please come out, utilize the space, utilize us and make us work because the more that we, you're in our face, the more we have to do for you all. So please, please, please reach out and please, please, please volunteer. And lastly, um, there's a food distribution going on, uh, stuff a trunk. It's through, Angela also Brooks, 
it'll be happening. I wish it was actually on there. I know I sent it. Let's see my email. Give me one second. One second. One second. Sent. Oh. Okay. So yes. Um, it'll be at Six Flags, November eighteenth, starting at ten a.m. So get out there, get some stuff, get some some produce, some chicken. I don't know what they're going to have, but please, <laughs> if you're available to go, uh, check out the event. And that concludes my council report. Thank you. And I also want to say <laughs> that we're trying to start a committee. So Chevrolet has a community African-American, it's a community African-American civic organization. Um, I'm trying to have the name of one of the leads of so the person that started that, um, and I'm planning on inviting her to possibly come to speak with some of us tomorrow. So for anyone that's interested, I think it's very important to uh, celebrate our community, provide space for our community to talk. Um, so this includes the African American community, the Hispanic community, the Filipino community, the Ethiopian, Eritrean community. Um, this isn't something that segregates us. This is actually um, something that celebrates our culture and brings us together, um, but also provides space to really deal with um, issues or ideas that we as a community have amongst ourselves so that then we can share it with, um, with the rest of, of the council or with the town. So I see this as a very positive thing. And so I just appreciate you and your willingness to be a part of it. So. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't see. Well, thank you, I appreciate it so much. Um, so, uh, yes, Ward 2, Irina Hobbs would like to provide an update for the past months. I just wanted to uh, say big thanks to our, um, I participated in the town cleanup event. And what I noticed for myself is how much cleaner the town looked. So I participated in, in similar events before, and I know I've had, and I only, of course, did my Ward, ward 2, uh, but um, I just, I noticed how much uh, cleaner, I didn't have food trash bags like I did before. Um, the gutters are cleaner. It, it, they were like freshly swept. And um, would like to thank our public works. I would like to thank Aiden. I saw him in this new, lead, new truck that we bought for him, um, just driving, driving through the streets and picking up trash. Um, and I see the results. Uh, a huge shout out. It, it's it's much cleaner. Again, ha, I've done this before in the past, and it was a big difference. And I I don't I I appreciate the work and the dedication that it takes that you put into that much work because uh, there is a huge difference. Um, I also attended a Halloween event. Saw the dedication of the team um, of Amelia, the recreation team. Uh, there are so many creative people, creative ideas. We made a ghost out of a balloon and um, tablecloth, white. And it was a fun event for kids as well to draw um, on those balloons. And overall, the, the Halloween event was never of this grandeur. Um, and of this, I think, um, like fun, um, a, a great fun. Um, and I stayed for about two two hours and it was very prolonged. It was just like, a, I don't know, it went probably into the night. I've heard some music, but it's not, wasn't, yeah, it, it was just um, very, in, in this case, it was beautiful. It was beautifully decorated. It was designed for various activities and for various um, kids, various kids of various ages, uh, very well thought out. Uh, I hope we can yeah, continue in this session. And uh, we have, it seems like we have a great uh, team of coordinate, rec coordinators, volunteers, um, and um, public works, the whole town, everybody I'm sure pulled in. 
the resources to have such a great event. Um, also, I attended Leaders Breakfast, um, that where Malcolm Augustine presented, uh, talked about legislative updates, what really stood out to me is, I know he's been working for a long time, he's been working on making childcare, um, not just affordable, but free. Um, like, just so it's like everybody can, um, in the state of Maryland, can qualify. And I, I think this is really what stood out for me. And I really am excited if, if this goes through um, in the next legislative session and if we can um, fund, uh, we can have resources to fund it because um, it, I realized how critical it is when I had my sister-in-law um, living with us and um, how d difficult, how complicated it was to navigate through the system. If it's not like uniform, if it's, um, it, it varies, and there's so many different factors, and um, I'm really excited for this um, legislative update from um, Senator Augustine. Um, so um, maybe also to add uh, for the, uh, to uh, Council Member Malik Harding, um, so there are a few giveaways this coming weekend that um, also are happening. So I think one you mentioned on the 18th, this is the Turkey giveaway that is um, that is organized by our um, legislators of the town. And there's another one, and the location is not provided. It's only a QR code, right? So I don't know if you talk about this one. No. Um, so um, so there's one Turkey giveaway. But there's also a Bladensburg Thanksgiving meal distribution that is happening um, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it is at the, um, you can pre-register at bladensburg.gov and find more information there. Again, it's also a QR code. Um, and um, this is, again, this Saturday, November 18th. Well, there's an address here at 4257th Avenue, Bladensburg, Maryland, 20710. And then there is, on the same day, November 18th, Stuff a Truck Holiday Food Distribution. Stuff a Truck, and it is at, in Bowie. Uh, the address is uh, 13710 Central Avenue, Bowie, Maryland, 20721 and it is at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So all of them seem to be around the same time. Some give away turkey, some uh, more, a little bit more than turkey. Um, so if, yes, these are some of the announcements um, I would like to uh, provide if anybody who would like uh, some additional um produce for to set up their holiday festivities and holiday table. These are the options that they have uh, the county can provide. Thank you. This is all. Thank you. And I think <clears throat> as Mr. Sweep was mentioning when we were thinking through uh, programs and projects, we did a tour, um, some of the staff back like a year ago, um, a tour of the Eritrean church, the Orthodox church not just of the church itself, but of their space, the, the rental space. And they have rooms, they have conference rooms, but they have one room that's dedicated to kids. And when I saw that, some, some light bulbs went off in my head because I'm thinking, wow, wouldn't this be a great childcare center? So I think um, in the future, one of the things that I'd love to like look into is starting a childcare in Colmar Manor. And if we can get funding for it, I think that's something that we should think about and see how we can make happen. Um, but even then, just um, funding training for people who want to start their own childcare business. So there are programs that help people do that. So um, thank you for bringing that up. Ward three, um, I want to start off with the Thank you for everyone who came out to the Peace Cross to support the Veterans Day. I also wanna um, do a shout out to Happy Native American Heritage Month. So fun fact, U.S. District Judge Diane Humatua is the first female Native American judge to serve on the federal bench 
Um, there's some more information on uscourts.gov about that. Um, resident comments. There was a resident that came up to me about interacting with other residents who may be experiencing mental health challenges. So I'll try to um, reiterate the resource that we have at the town hall and hopefully we can um, help support that resident. Um, I saw that in the town administrators update, there are um, about 30 plus trees that are going to Ward 4. So kudos to Ward 4 on that. I think that would be um, definitely a great asset. And that lumps into um, my next element with the health section. So um, as, as we have different environmental changes, um, one of the things in the Casey trees helps with the um, cooling of certain areas, but just finding different ways to work with the green team to educate residents on ways we can mitigate that and to continue to strive for our vision of a sustainable community. So continue to push that forward with education. Um, with the website coming up, I would definitely like to work with our treasurer to see if we can get more information regarding the financials. So maybe the past five years of audited financials, as well as any um, closed procurement contracts or open procurement contracts just for um, transparency. And then lastly, um, learning how we can work with the town attorney to create a know your rights cheat sheet. So there is a resident who, oh, bless you. There's, bless you. There is a resident who approached me regarding a stop that their, their kin had experience with a police officer and their lack of understanding of knowing the rights was um, one of the things that the individual said that they would like to educate more residents in the town about. So that is the update for three. I think that's a great idea. Um, I'm not sure if the town attorney could help because he charges us a lot of money, uh, but there are organizations out there that we can invite to come in and do um, workshops. One of them is Casa, Casa de Maryland, but um, I think that's a, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I've actually been thinking about bringing a lawyer, um, an immigration lawyer to come and talk to people, but um, seeking out some other uh, groups that do this pro bono would be awesome. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in this evening um, online and here with us. Um, I just wanted to um, thank the Recreation Committee for hosting an awesome, spectacular event on October 28th. Uh, there was a ribbon cutting, what Mayor said, for the, um, for the great David C. Harrington. So um, if you don't know, David Harrington was a public servant in so many aspects. He was a uh, mayor for the town of Bladensburg. Uh, he was also on the county, served on the county council, and then was also our state senator. So he was a public servant and leader in so many ways here in Prince George's County and throughout the state. So he is heavily missed. And to have that ribbon cutting done at the um, holistic center was great to see. And I know it was, very good for his family. I mean, yet his whole family was there to witness that, which was awesome. And even more that it was in Comer Bay. Uh, PGCMA, we are meeting, we are gonna, we've been talking about our legislative priorities, but we are trying to narrow it down. Uh, we have a chapter meeting this coming Thursday in um, Landover Hills. And that is also in person and also via Zoom. So if you would like to um, join, you know, let me know, email me, and I can get you that information. Uh, the last thing was um, it was Veterans Day on Saturday. We were at the Peace Cross. Uh, just want to thank everyone um, 
all the ones for your service. Thank you for your sacrifice, for your valor, valor and the things you carry for protecting us and defending our rights. Thank you all of our veterans for your courage, strength, and dedication to keeping us safe. And um, oh, one last thing, we had our first um, charter review committee meeting and um, Philip was in the mix. Uh, it was great to see um, the residents that who are involved in it and I just see good things coming out of this committee. So thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so I forgot to mention, thank you chief and the police department. Yes. Um, on Halloween for going around and giving you kids candy and making sure that we were all safe and crossing the street safely. I only had one incident with a car like speeding down and I had to catch myself from, I mean, I yelled at him. I was like, slow down. So, and this was right in front of the American Legion. So um, just wanna say thank you for keeping us safe and for being so involved in the community. And as far as the, um, food distributions go, I'll share them on the screen now. There's a bunch of them. So um, Jolene Ivy is hosting one. Uh, and I believe that's the QR code that you were referring to. Yeah, so it's, it says location. Oh, I'm not sharing. Oops. Oh, okay. Let me share this screen sharing. Stop share. And then share again. Um, so that's Saturday, November 18th, um, Delegate Council Member Jolene Ivey is hosting that event. Uh, I'll ask, or we'll post these on Facebook if we haven't already, but um, I'll see if we can find a place to post this on the website. Then um, we have uh, the, well, the Found Good Intentions Foundation. So I, I, I didn't know what to call uh, Dejanine Fennell, but Delegate Fennell's daughter and her family um, have started this foundation and they've been very active. And so they'll be doing a Thanksgiving basket outreach as well on Saturday. And there's information here. It's going to be where? Upper Marlboro. So 610 Largo Road, Upper Marlboro. I'll make sure to go ahead and uh, put this out as well. Seton High School is having a food drive from the 1st to the 15th, so I believe tomorrow is the last day, but definitely um, if you have not been to Seton High School, it's right down the road from us. It's an awesome high school, all girls high school. Um, so if there are people that wanna donate food, that's one location where you can do that. The American Legion is having a fall annual harvest on Saturday, November 25th. So they're gonna have music, soup, chili, grilled cheese, hot cider, bonfire, treats, and games. So um, I would say don't pass that opportunity up. It's a lot of fun to go to the American Legion. Oh, stop share. I think that's it. Um, we have been um, very lucky. So back in um, August, I asked Delegate Fennell if we could get some turkeys. And Delegate Fennell is um, arranging for us to get 20 turkeys. So I just want to give her a huge shout out and thank you. And we may also be getting some food bags from Shabak Ministries. So thank you, Shabak. As always, um, we I really value your support and the care that you have for residents all over Prince George's County. So thank you so much for that. And I think that might be it. So I will go ahead and um, open it up to resident comments. So if you're online, raise your hand. If you're in person, just come up to the mic, state your name and the street that you live on. Really? Nobody has any questions, comments? Okay, um, well, while people think of something to say if they want to, I want to also say that we are in Municipal Government Works Month. So yes, yay, thank you to all of the Municipal um, Government Works, Public Works people, um, 
Government Works also includes the police station. All of us. Oh, you too? Me? All of us? Oh, so yay to us. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, well, th this is, people tell me this all the time. It's a thankless job. So when you do say thank you for, to us, I'm, I am just full of gratitude and it is an honor for me to serve. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone. Thank you to the staff who make it possible for me to do the things that, that I do. Thank you to the council and all of the volunteers that are so dedicated and involved in our community. So thank you. Um, it takes a village and we have a strong village and a strong community. So thank you. Okay, so if there are no comments, no questions, I would like to request a motion to adjourn. Council Member Hardy, I'll make the motion to adjourn today's meeting. Council Member votes for three seconds. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>